Okay, everybody. So yesterday we did the Shake It Rockstar's lab, and you shook it, shook it, shook it, shook it, shook, right? And you poured the sediment into your little test tubes. And that's what we have in front of you here now. We're going to use this as an example. You now have to measure the height of the sediment. We're not measuring volume. We're not measuring the amount of sediment. We're measuring the height of sediment. Okay, and I'll show you how to do this. It's very prescribed. You can't do it from up here because you cannot see. So one by one, you're going to take your test tube out of the test tube rack. You're going to put it on the table. And notice I'm getting right down here at eye level, okay? The next thing you have to understand is how to use this ruler. What two scales are on this ruler? Ava? Inches and centimeters. Inches and centimeters. We're not using either of them. What do you think we're using? Millimeters. Millimeters. How many millimeters are in a centimeter? Ten. 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 So instead of using this one, these centimeters that are like this, we're going to use the little itty bitty increments between them, starting way down here on the centimeter side. There are 10 millimeters in there. Most of your sediment will not be more than 10 centimeters. Some might be. So once again, I'm going to take out the test tube, get it eye level on the floor. The weird thing about this, is there a space between the bottom lines? <coughs> oh, there's a little space. So you've got to set your ruler up so that the edge of the desk is touching that bottom line. All right, there we go. So this sediment level is four. So what this group is going to do, Wyatt and Addison and Hannah, is on a piece of scrap paper, you're going to write two, it, two minutes equals four millimeters. Two minutes equals four mm. You're going to write that on paper. And you're going to measure every five, all five of your test tubes. And I'm going to pause the video while you guys do that. Please be careful as you carry the test tube racks. Okay, we're back. So the students have already measured their sediment and they've dumped out the water. So guys, what we're going to do is we're going to actually keep the sediment you dumped out in there so that you can feel what silt in clay feels like. Remember I said it's so, so fine you can't see it with the naked eye? Oh, yeah. Well, when that eventually deposits, that's deposition over there, right? It's going to be clear water on top. I'm going to keep dumping the clear water until there's nothing left but dehydrated clay and um, silt, and you're going to feel it's really Ooh. super soft. So that, that takes a couple of days to do. That, that's a side, a side bonus of this, of this uh, activity. Anyway, we're going to make a graph. And I know you've done graphing before, but how familiar are you with control and dependent dependent variables? Sort of. Yeah, I'm going to teach you something. Woohoo! Okay, here we go. So independent variable is the thing that you totally manage in the experiment. I always say to myself, I, which is the first letter of independent, I manage the independent variable. What did we manage in this experiment? What was the one thing, I'm not giving you a hint, I was, mm -hmm. okay. what did we actually Time. have total control over? Raise your hand if you know. Gwen, what is it? Time. Time. We managed time. Time is our independent variable. It was very specific, right? Everybody was the same. Two, four, six, eight, ten. And I had the clock going, right? So time was our independent variable. So what we're going to do in our graph is we're going to list that at the bottom. So let me show you. This machine is called an overhead projector. It is the precursor to the machine, the white ones that Mrs. Wyman uses and I have over there. They're very old-fashioned, but they're very useful when it comes to drawing things like graphs. This is a piece of plastic. I write on it with a vis-a-vis -vis pen. And then I just wash it off with water and it's clean. I can use it all over again, okay? Just like up here, this is the same kind of material. So you've got graph paper in front of you. You can put it like this or this or this or this, but I want it so that your fat part is at the bottom and this side, and it's tall. It's tall shaped with fat at the bottom and the left. Those of you at home, you have the graph paper. I'm sending it to you. Let's turn off the lights. I think we may have better luck with the... Uh, screen if we do. All right, so an independent variable always goes on the x-axis. Which is the x-axis? This axis, the horizontal axis, or the vertical axis? Horizontal. The horizontal axis, the bottom of your graph. So somewhere down here you're going to write time 
in minutes. I will tell you that when I grade graphs, some of your points come from neatness. Why are you laughing? All right, so that's our independent variable. It's on the x-axis. We have another axis here. What's this axis called? Y -axis. The y-axis. Anyone know which variable goes on there? Uh, x2 numbers. Okay, it's the dependent variable. The dependent variable is the thing that we measure. What did we measure in this experiment? Peyton. Like the tubes, like the, the, um, the tubes that we had to put like, water in, like measure it. Like the, um, the test tubes. We measured the test tubes. What were we measuring in those test tubes? That you're right on track. Yeah. The sediment. The what of the sediment? We measured. Do you need me, Miss George? Okay. See if I can learn anything. You want to get in front of the camera here? Is that fun visiting? No. 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 We're not. We're not zooming. I'm just filming myself. Oh, okay. Yeah. So no, anyway. Yeah. Yes. We're measuring sediment. Sediment in millimeters. So turn your paper sideways. Our dependent variable is going to be height, H-E-I-G-H-T, height of sediment in millimeters. Along the side. Height of sediment in millimeters. MM is the abbreviation for millimeters. Can you actually write millimeters? You could write it out, sure. Nope. Because someone might not know what that means. Um, scientists would definitely know what it means. What about the bottom? The bottom, time in minutes. The bottom, time in minutes. You always have to have your measurement on your graph, like minutes or millimeters, or it would be wrong. Because we don't know if it's time in hours, time in decades, time in centuries. We don't know. And when you're talking about geology, it could be decades, millions of years, right? Okay, so now we have our independent variable, our dependent variable. So independent variable, the thing that we manage, right? Dependent variable, the thing that we measure, right? And now we're going to plot some data. Now I must say that there's also, some, there's also something called a control variable, which we're going to get to after we plot these. Can I please have your data quiet? Your numbers here. All right, so we are going to plot some data in here. First, we have to use a scale. What I like to do is set my bars up before I start. How many test tubes did we have? Everybody? Five. Five. So I'm going to draw a line here for my first test tube and label it two. Then I'm going to skip a space and draw another one and write a four under it. And skip the space and write a six under it. What am I gonna write next? Eight. Eight, and what am I gonna write next? Ten. Ten. Those are the bases for my five columns or bars on my graph. Now we also need a scale for the height. And looking at this, I'm guessing you, your sediment range is anywhere from like 2 up to like 11 or 12, right? Somewhere in there? Yeah? yeah? Okay. So let's count for, for each millimeter. We're going to count two bars up. So we're going to go 1, 2, slash, and write a 1 there. 1, 2, slash, and write a 2 there. 1, 2, slash, and write a 3. And I'm going to keep going putting little hatch marks next to them. Okay, then you need to move, okay? Because I can't move. You can move your chair, that's just fine. Who's got the, uh, what's the highest number we have for measurement here? This guy, these guys have 14. Anyone have higher than 14? So go as high as your highest number. Go as high as your highest number. These guys have 14. They're going to have to go pretty high. Oops. Okay. 
Now I've got my dependent variable scale and I've got my independent variable scale. All right, does everybody understand how we did that? Mm -hmm. The reason that I skipped a line with these is just to make the graph taller, just to look more pronounced, right? You could have a tiny little graph down here, and that's okay, but I want to see the differences in the bars. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at Wyatt and Addison and Hannah's data, and they have four millimeters for two minutes. So I'm going to go up to my four, and I'm going to put a cap on my bar at four. You put a cap on your measurement for number two. Okay, so whatever your measurement was, put a cap on it, and then fill in the bar. What were the measurements? Just shout them out for me. What were they? Five, three, four. Okay, all right. Three, four, four. All right, so, and then their next measurement was eight, so I'm going to go up to eight and put a cap on it and then fill in the bar. And I'm gonna turn off the camera while everybody finishes graphing their five columns. I'll be back. All right, back to it again. So everybody has drawn in their graphs and um, what we have here is what I would call perfect results. Why would I call these perfect results for this lab? Think about it. Why would this be really great results for this lab? Luke, why do you think so? Because the numbers keep going up. The numbers going keep going up. You guys told me yesterday that the longer a rock tumbles down the river, the more it weathers, right? Yeah. So would you not expect that the longer we shook the, the bottles, the higher the, the, the higher the sediment height would be? Is that what this shows? Yeah. The longer we shook it, two, four, six, eight, the higher the sediment. Now, would you please stand up if you also have results that do this? They go directly up. Stand up, please. If, if your results, your numbers get higher each time, stand up, please. Each time. Each time. Each number's higher. Okay, sit down, please. So for those who are at home, we had only one group stand up, and it's this group. Does that make everybody else bad or wrong? No, no. no it does not. Yes. This is what takes into play control variables. What are, we have to control a lot of things, things in, the, in this experiment so that everybody has the right results. Now, can you hold off on that, please? So what things did we have to do all the same in our groups to make sure that the results were as accurate as possible. Ava, what's one thing? You have to like shake the right bottles at the right time. Shake the right bottles at the right time. What else? And that's really important. Making sure you're shaking four and not six. Uh-huh. And you gotta go like this like on You have to go on the beat and you had to shake the right way. I was watching some kids yesterday and some were shaking like this. What do you think that did? It gave more what? More, more sediment. Some people were going, okay? And some people were just doing this. So we all had to shake the same way. Is it actually truly possible to everybody shake exactly the same no. way? No. no. We'd have to be robots to do that. But we were robots. If you did this experiment again, do you think you could get better results? Yeah. Yes. Yes. You'd talk it over. You'd say, oh, we're going to all shake the same way. And it would be great. So those are some of the controls. Are there any other controls that have to be the same in this experiment to get the right results? I can think of some more. That has nothing to do with how you shape. Ben? We had to fill it to the top of the water. Right. The level of the water in your test tube. It had to be exactly the same. Very good. What else? When? Like what Absolutely. You know how I had you eyeball the rocks and five piles? Do you think that was very scientific? No. No. It that was not very scientific. There should have been a better way to find five exact piles. Those rock piles should be the same. What about the type of rock? Could that affect it? Yeah. Yeah. Do some rocks weather faster than others? Yeah. Yes. So there are a lot of things that, um, that were maybe out of our control that we could have controlled a little better. Mm -hmm. um, how, um, about, when we're only carrying one at a time, when we carry... Um, like number two and switch to number four, we're doing the exact same time. Or were we doing it longer for number four? We're doing it longer for four because you put down two at two minutes. So, and then you picked up eight. So the two and the eight bottles were, were shaken for two and eight. 
The four was put down, and you pick up six. You had a four to six, and ten was shaking the whole time. That's why this experiment can only be done with three people, right? I mean, it, it, you could, you, if you have to do it two, you could, but then you're shaking two bottles. So it's perfect for three people. All right, so what we're missing on our graph is something really important. If you didn't have this on your graph, you would lose a point. We've got a label for our x-axis. We have a label for our y-axis. We've got a scale and a scale. What are we missing? A title. A title. And the title of this graph is Shake It Rock Stars. Shake It Rock Stars. Shake It Rock Stars is our title. We're going to be doing more graphs in class. We've got quite a few this year in science. Um, and for future reference, guys, you need to use rulers. I didn't tell you today, but future rulers. Um, Everything has to be spelled correctly, and you're supposed to make it colorful and beautiful. Um, so right now, I'm going to turn off the camera. You guys make it colorful and beautiful. You guys make it colorful and beautiful. Good job. See you around, folks.